Going over picture options as clear cut and dry as we can. We've got backlight, local dimming is always set to medium by default. Uh, we obviously want that on high, so that's the change that I make usually immediately. Turn off the light sensor, that usually amplifies the peak brightness substantially, right? Um, but the picture modes that they offer this year are vivid, standard, energy, game, sports, theater day, theater night, auto, and filmmaker mode. So IMAX enhanced mode is only exclusive to HDR as I thought. Outside of that, you have your regular contrast, brightness, color, tint, and sharpness sliders. And then you have the ability to adjust your aspect ratio through picture size, like wide or whatever. Uh, you can apply to all sources, which is a very nice thing to have. You have a smart scene. So this is, I would imagine, more in the way of auto content recognition type stuff. Then you have the advanced settings where you have your color temperature, and right here, motion enhancement. So this is the big difference between the U6G and the U7G. The U6G does not have motion enhancement options where the U7G, as you guys see here with motion rate 480 does. You have custom, film, clear, standard, and smooth. I like to start off in smooth because I love the soap opera effect. I think it's very cool, but that's a personal preference there. Um, motion clearness, I leave that off. That's just black frame insertion. We don't need that. You have noise reduction, which you still have off, low, medium, and high. And the same can be said about the digital noise reduction. Uh, HDMI dynamic range, you don't even have to mess with that. Um, then for your active contrast, this is the dynamic contrast that basically every TV manufacturer has. And you have low, medium, and high. Then filmmaker mode, you have auto detection. I would turn that off getting the TV because it just makes things really dark and washed out and dim, keeping to 30 year old reference standards that honestly speaking don't work anymore with today's kind of content. I mean, for crying out loud, we didn't have quantum dots back then. So to try to justify washing out color on a quantum dot TV for me isn't worth it. Now for some people they might want it and by all means leave filmmaker mode on and never touch it again but I've never found filmmaker mode to really do anything of value for me personally. Um, native is the color space that is selected but you can also choose auto. I don't recommend choosing auto. It will tend to wash out your color on something so you're gonna have to play that one by eye um, but uh, don't worry if you guys need help with settings i will have settings available exclusively for channel members so again you don't have to worry about that if you want somebody to help you get set up it's like five bucks to join up and i got you covered there uh, you have instant game response you have free sync so i mean yeah you've got all the bells and whistles you really need now under the calibration settings which is always my favorite part you've got a color management system called color tuner and you have every color from red to magenta all the way down to the flesh tone which other manufacturers don't even include a flesh tone calibration option so high sense is ahead of the curve with this one um, and then you have the white balance adjustment and this is going to be for both the two point so the two point grayscale, and then you have the 20 point so you know you can make tons of adjustments here to get that grayscale exactly where you need it to be you've got your gamma you can choose from a couple different options 2.0 2.2 and the industry standard bt1886 for sdr so again that's basically all you really have to do now if you're in hdr uh hlg is going to be uh BT2100, but I mean, you don't really need to know all of that, right? That's the, just the gamma curve for HLG. And then for the uh, ST2084 gamma curve, that's basically HDR10. So when you see those, those kinds of things show up, that's what that means. But again, this is just very generalized. Um, and then now one thing I will say though, I really wish they would let you access HLG and ST2084 to force HDR on SDR content so you could be a little bit more creative in the TV. That's also an area of opportunity to improve and maybe give a little bit more in that regard because other manufacturers, I mean like literally almost all of them, Sony, Samsung, uh, LG, they, they in some aspect let you force this and give a signal where this is locked out. So I'll try to talk to Hisense about maybe trying to open this up or something because this is something that really should be accessible, um, not just from testing and, and analytical perspectives, but also to be able to just have free reign and do what you need to do. Um, but again, that's neither here nor there. Now the gamma calibration, there's always a lot of question around it, like how do you use it? What is it for? As you guys see, it goes from input level five all the way up to input level 100. And essentially all you really do here is you find parts in your gamma signal that look 
bad, right? They're overly bright. And usually what happens, sometimes you run out of red or you run out of blue, or when you start running out of things, and let's say you look at your, your graphs or your charts and you find that, you know, red is way too high and, and that's leading to some areas being a little bit brighter than they should be. Blue's a little too high, it's a little brighter than it should be on like maybe, let's say, 50% IRE or whatever. All you can do is, all you need to do is go into the input level here and you go to 50 and then you can go into gain and raise it up and that's going to brighten up that gamma curve so that you're you're not or darken or you lower it rather and and that's going to darken that gamma curve essentially this is a a super useful tool when you start running out of uh, resources and the main tools it's a secondary tool and again it's an awesome calibration thing that most manufacturers don't offer Hisense is the only one with something like this and it's how you get crazy accurate looking images when you run out of resources fortunately though I've actually never really needed to use it because Hisense's default white balance system is so incredible but I mean it's just the fact that they give you all of these features as a calibrator as a professional that really allows you to be able to take it to the next level I have literally never seen a single YouTuber, reviewer, so-called expert talk about this feature because they can't because they don't know about it and I think it's a darn shame because this is so cool. But I'll digress, I'm kind of geeking out here. All right, and outside of that you have RGB, uh, RGB only mode and again, you don't really use that for much outside of color correction and things like that when you have the little color card and things like that. But again, it, it, most people use programs these days but again, you, you every TV, for the most part nowadays has that. But again, just going over the settings that you have, and then you have reset, and then that will wipe everything out, and obviously you guys know that. But yeah, those are basically the options that you guys do have. Um, and I, I forgot to mention when you have automatic light sensor on, you can control light shift, which light shift is basically how bright things can be. You can set it to a minimum backlight level of, or a maximum backlight level of 10. There is a bit of a change here in that regard because if I recall, the light sensor shift used to be up to 20. And I think now it's down as low as 10 and you really can't do anything with that. And I think that's a darn shame because it used to be able to go as high as 20 and now they cut the power. So don't know why, but that's just something I did notice and it was worth mentioning. So yeah.